Hello everyone, this is Jimmy and welcome to episode 16 of Celestial Journey. The name of the game today is Batania Runes. Our goal, ultimately, is to make the Ritual Diviner of Dusk so that we can do the blood magic ritual that automatically generates life essence. And this takes a handful of various uh, tier 3 Batania runes. So the 7 Deadly Sins represent the tier 3 runes, the 4 Seasons represent the tier 2 runes, and the 4 Elements plus uh, Mana, I guess, represent the tier 1 runes. Ironically enough, the tier 4 runes are actually the easiest ones to make, at least in terms of the runic altar step, because none of the input runes are consumed. These are all returned to you. And it really only consumes the two blocks of mana diamond. Um, so it's like, it's a fair bit of mana, but besides that, you know, eh, mana, plenty of mana. Um, that said, you still have to start from the tier one runes. So uh, looking at these runes, most of them have like at least one component that's kind of a pain. So for now, we're not going to fully automate it. Like this, this needs puffer fish. Uh, I guess we'll have to run a mob spawner for guardians or elder guardians but um anyways uh i guess let's start from water so for rune of water fish jerky has to be made from drying raw fish um can we make guardian essence by chance no it takes tier th uh intermedium making intermedium takes this infusion crystal i looked at it and it's like eh, i don't want to make this yet we'll get around to it actually on second thought mm -hmm. Yeah, on second thought, this will be a lot easier to make after we have alchemy of all these various components automated. So instead of doing a bunch of manual alchemy right now, why don't we push on with the runes instead? And instead, I'll just uh, you know manually dry like half dozen fish, which should be enough for a little while. So rune of water needs fish and puffer fish. So let's grab a spawner for that. Um, now we found, or I found a. Uh, oops, it's off in this direction. I found a ocean temple thingy ocean monument uh on 700 meters this way and previously i rated it for prismarine but this time i'll go grab one of the guardians uh, i don't i don't think i want one of the elder guardians because i don't want to get debuffed while working on the mob farm so we'll just take you Oop, i got debuffed anyways yeah whatever if it comes to it i'll go drink milk and we can dump this guy in our mob farm our farm here has made us 2,500 stacks of Wildwood Souls. I suspect that'll be enough so we can swap this out. I, I love how fast these mob duplicators are. They're so much faster than the uh, the, the Under IO mob spawner. Like this thing spawns a couple mobs every five seconds, maybe. Like that spawned four mobs and then we wait and we keep waiting and we keep waiting. And eventually it spawns four more. This one, though, uh, once I turn it on, it's like, I heard you want mobs, so I spawn 40 of them every second. It's so much better. Anyways, that gives us our uh, fish and prismarine. So uh, I'll just have to add this. Well, lots of different drops. I'll just have to add all these to our drop wall. So previously, I thought that the mob crusher kills stuff with fortune or looting already, but the uh, text here says accept fortune add-on. So maybe it doesn't, and we should, you know, make it the fortune add-on. Take a look at the recipe. It's very easy, except the pink slime, which requires um, fluid sieving the pink slime fluid, which comes from uh, the mm, one of the industrial forgoing machines. Usually, it says here, um, like the mob crushing factory or something Let's see if i can find it a uh, mob slaughter factory so let's try making one of these i'm making a couple pink slime ingots and see if we can uh make the fortune add-on if that'll make us get more drops i think it's worth taking a couple minutes to do this detour i think the slaughter factory can generate pink slime off any mob but my understanding is it gets more off passive mobs so uh pigs it is and it seems to only slaughter one mob at a time. Let's give it some upgrades. So without upgrades, it's slaughtering one pig every 25 ticks. With upgrades, it's 13 ticks, and I think it's getting multiples. It looks like it's getting two every two or three every 13 ticks. Anyways, 
much faster. Um, it produces liquid meat and liquid pink slime. So I'm storing them both in these black hole tanks just because I don't want it to fill up. Uh, likewise, I have a lever which should shut off the spawner, which it does. Um, but anyway, this is basically just one of these pods, except instead of a grinder, it's a Bob Slaughter factory. So there's a couple things we can do with these fluids. First of all, liquid meat I think can be used for ore processing. It's pretty weird, but like you take liquid meat, you uh, you apparently can put it in your nuclear reactor too. But uh, you can like wash ore in it and then ferment the ore and then process it into dust. Really weird process. I'm probably not going to do it. It seems to give a 3x yield. But um, what we're actually interested in is this pink slime. So let's grab a bucket first. Let's see. So pink slime can be placed in world? Can fill from container. No? Fill. There we go. Uh, and when you do so, a couple seconds or a little while after you place it, a cute little pink slime mob will spawn. So let's place it here and, well, apparently it can't be done in the nether. All right, let's do that in the overworld real quick. All right, so when you place it here, after some amount of time, last time, oh, wow, that was quick. I was about to say, last time I did it, it took a couple minutes. But uh, a cute little pink slime mob will pop out. And, uh... What we can do with him is, when we kill him, he drops pink slime balls. So let's go duplicate him a few thousand times. I'll temporarily put him here in place of the Cyclops. We have a lot of Cyclops eyes, but I think we'll still need more eventually. Maybe not. 200 stacks. I don't know. We'll definitely need more fish, though, so I'm leaving the... Uh... Whoa. How are they getting out? Oh, I think what happens is when, the, when they split, they can push through a layer of wall. Uh, that's right, this is only temporary. So you can already see we have some pink slime balls in our inventory. Um, let me clean this up a little. So pink slime balls can be compacted into regular slime blocks, which means that they can also be turned back into, well, I don't need, I, they can be turned back into green slime if you care. But um, generally speaking, any recipe that accepts green slime will also accept pink slime. And these guys are just getting out like it's nobody's business. So I'm probably not going to bother spawning that many more. Anyways, uh, there are, however, some recipes that explicitly require pink slime, like the fluid sieving machine. So fluid sieve. Uh, it explicitly requires a pink slime ball, and I don't know how to make dark iron bars. Okay, so um, with the fluid sieve, though, we can now turn this pink slime fluid, instead of just into... Uh, these pink slime mobs, we can turn them into ingots. So let's go build one. So our fluid sieving machine, when provided with pink slime, iron ingots, and lastly, power, uh, power, will turn iron ingots into pink slime ingots. And then we can store these, I guess, back in our drawers here. Do these compact? We do not. All right. Uh, I've rearranged stuff a little bit so that like stuff we get very few drops of go in two by two drawers. Make this a little bit more efficient. Cool. So that'll be our source of pink slime ingots. I need to run item conduits to it too, I guess. Man, thank goodness for conduits sharing block space. Some of these here, I have four conduits running in one square. An ME conduit, an item conduit, a fluid conduit, and an energy conduit. So nifty. All right, so this will automatically produce our pink slime for us. Honestly, we don't need nearly this much pink slime. There's very few uses for it. Even, like... When we're at the, you know, craft super late game crafting stage, we only need a little bit of pink slime. So uh, this system, probably in a couple minutes, oh, we used up all our pink slime. Um, anyways, this will, probably in a couple hours or so, we'll produce more pink slime than we need for the entire playthrough. At which point, we can probably just convert it back into a n normal, you know, mob grinder uh, setup. But the whole reason we did all that was to make these fortune add-ons. So uh, make two for now. They can be enchanted with up to fortune three books. So I assume the point is you make them and then enchant them with fortune three and then use them. Um, I mean, I guess that's exactly what the text here says. All right, so let's, uh, I don't know, I'll make five or so and enchant them. We have plenty of levels to use, right? According to JEI, these only accept uh, fortune. Here, how do I do that? You. Yeah, they only accept fortune, not looting. So I assume fortune can be used in place of looting. Um, looks like, so let's see, we're getting 
14, somewhere around like 15 Prismarine, 25 Prismarine per shot with it in. Let's see how much we get without it. Is it noticeably more or noticeably less? It's 12, 6. I have to, yeah, but I, I do think it is noticeably more with it, right? So I think it works. Not that I ever doubted whether or not it would work, but um, we can put that in and then we can, I figure may as well put energy upgrades in. I think it, yeah, so with energy upgrades, it takes 536 R. I mean, <coughs> look, we're saving like three R if it take, all right? We're saving, we go from 14 to 40. Wait, we use, no, 40 R if a tick every 25 ticks. 40 R if a tick every 14 ticks. So all it does is make it run more often, but that doesn't actually make us kill any more mobs. Wait, so these upgrades actually do literally nothing. All right, whatever. They're, I've already made them. They're going in there. And we can do the same here. And that'll cause this... It effectively just means that um, we use a little less essence and we get more stuff per unit time, I guess. Which means that we can more quickly swap out you know, this spawner for another type of spawner. So back to our original plan. We were making runes. Fish jerky, I have to go dry some fish. It takes five minutes, so I may as well start it now. Why can't I? Where did my jetpack go? Hello? Did I? Oh. My push it or my uh, start recording key sometimes unequips my jetpack. Yeah, weird bug. Anyways, dry fish. We'll start it now and come back for it in a few minutes. We can also automate this process, but meh. You know, I thought this was a blue slime ball at first. It looks a lot like a blue slime ball, doesn't it? Blue slime. Uh, is there no blue slime ball? There's a, oh, it's just called slime. All right, uh, let's, I just want to compare how they look. You'd be forgiven, right, for, for me thinking that this looks like this. They're like the exact same model. Okay, anyways, um, this unfortunately is not a blue slime. It uses slime, but we have to kill krakens for it, kraken skin. So I think uh, I'm going to, once again, break out our mob imprisonment tool and go find a kraken in the ocean. I presume they spawn in the ocean? Well, in a thoroughly embarrassing show of ineptitude, I didn't look at the recipe. Turns out you just craft the darn things out of ink sacks, and we can get ink sacks from our diocese. So, uh, <laughs> whoops. Man, after all this time, we're still working on just the Rune of Water, the first one of a billion, and we're not even done with it yet? So the icy base here takes, way down in its crafting tree, cryothium dust. Uh, that means we have to spawn blizzes. Now, the good news is we only have to spawn blizzes temporarily because later blizzes or blizz dust, whatever, blizz rods can be made through mystical agriculture. So, but we're not at that point yet. So first we have to uh, go capture ourselves a blizz. Whoa. Anyways, they're quite common here in Ice Kia, so you're coming with me. To some, this is probably an unforgivable sin, but our farm produces blizz rods so darn fast that I'm just gonna craft them into blizz powder. I'm not even gonna bother with the, uh, you know, sag mill or pulverizer recipes. While I've got some alchemy going on in the background, I figured I may as well take this time to craft our tier four blood warp. It takes fifty thousand LP which is conveniently the total storage of our blood altar right now. So I have to bleed into it quite a bit because yeah, every 10 hearts produces somewhere around 3,000. So I just have to bleed, I don't know, like 150 hearts into it. But with the ability to eat orange hearts to heal, you know, that'll take about a minute maybe. Yeah, we're already more than halfway there. So even less than that, like 30 seconds to produce 50,000 LP. It's a good rate, but the fact that it requires me here, you know, me to be here clicking makes it a bit less impressive. And some of you may ask, why Jimmy, why don't you just make runes of self-sacrifice to increase the amount of LP you get every time you click the dagger? Well, at first it was because I thought I could get to the uh, the ritual pretty quickly, so that would become obsolete. And now I'm just being stubborn. By all accounts, I should have made runes of self-sacrifice to make clicking the dagger more efficient. And it's done. The tier four blood orb. 
there's some alchemy recipes that require it and it increases our the like maximum size of our life essence or of our uh, like life essence bank not that i think we've ever maxed it but hey four blank patterns an actual useful reward what does this give oh, that's not useful anyways uh right click bind it to us and we can you know put it back in there to fill our life essence or now that we have now that i've finally done some more alchemy we can turn these icy bases into the elemental inscription tools of water which are a uh well, for one, they're part of the Ritual Diviner, but for two, they're part of the Rune of Water. Woohoo! And I think that's actually the last component. So let me make these four, and then we can go craft a few Runes of Water. Alas. At the end of the tunnel lies the Rune of Water. Let's try making eight for now. They craft two at a time, so it's four sets of crafts. And uh, I just want to make sure that our automation is still working. It blinked, but nothing happened. Ah, whatever. So it looks like it's crafting. Um, takes a fair amount of mana, but aside from that, yeah, it looks like we're in good shape. One of the four tier one runes is done. Next up, yep. Next up is the rune of fire. So uh, much like the previous one, there's a couple difficult. Well, let's see. What here is difficult? We need a lot of nether wart, but that's not a problem. Lava bucket. So I guess just we have to do a bit more alchemy for fire bases. And really, that's it. All right, so rune of fire should be easier than rune of water. Rune of fire. Let's once again make eight of them. Start. All right, so with that done, rune of earth. I think this one is also pretty easy. Uh, nothing in here really catches my eye. Once again, we have to do more uh, alchemy, which is still no more pleasant than it has been. But besides that, we have nature essence to make vines if needed. And I think this, yeah, mushrooms can also be made from basic essences. Cool. So Rune of Earth is next. Somewhere buried deep down in the Rune of Earth is uh, the Sol's Powder. If we follow this recipe down like 17 layers, Basal's powder can be made from Basal's rods, which according to a tooltip spawn in the Wildwood. So let's go find one. Where are you? Found ya. Oh, we have the, uh, I think there's two types, right? These are Basal's and those are, oh, those are just blitzes. Never mind. Will you stop hitting me? Is there those yellow? Wait, Blitz? Blitz is not Blizz, yes. Uh, I don't have another mod imprisonment tool, though. Shoot. Do I have an empty one in here? And no dice. I don't know why I have these. All right, I guess I'll come back here to grab the Blizzes another time. For what feels like the 10th time today, we are swapping our spawners around. But that's the advantage of having these easily swappable spawners, right? For our third tier one rune, runes of earth. Let's go. One more left, rune of air. Now this one has a couple challenges in it. I need wildwood leaves specifically, so I guess we have to make a trip back to there and grab some leaves. Cotton seeds. I hope we have cotton. I'm sure. Our, yeah, we have a reasonable amount. Uh, if we need more, I'll have to come up with a way of farming that, but. 100 is enough for at least to get started um and concentrated cloud seed bucket so let's see how do we make this go pulverized electrum with nothing and clay and ice okay so uh we'll need two vats but looks like we can make some cloud seed pretty easily so this process is only partially automated because i'm providing ingredients by hand but uh i ended up using ice and salt instead of like electron blender or whatever it has the same like amount of final output it just takes a little bit more salt to do it but salt we salt comes from our quarries and we have a uh, hundred thousand of it so anyways this final product will be as soon as i configure you to pull from there and let's get a tank i guess 
Um, let's go to Ender IO tank because these can automatically fill containers. And configure IO push. All right, so this will be a tank of cloud seed or concentrated cloud seed, which we need for runes of air. I need some more gas tiers for something in this rune of air. I think it's a component in Eris here. Uh, I'm not sure if there's enough room in this chamber for gas to spot, however, but I guess we'll find out. I put a roof on it so they can't, you know, escape or anything. But uh, let's see if they actually spawn in. Okay, it looks like they're able to spawn. We're only getting like three a set instead of like the, you know, 15 of other mobs we sometimes get. And it looks like the grinder can't quite reach some of them. But maybe that's because they're aggroed on me. Either way, this seems to produce gas tiers at a somewhat acceptable rate until all the mobs are stuck on the ceiling. Uh -uh. My solution, at least for the time being, is to just add a second mob crusher that gets the ones that spawn up high, and then this one gets the ones that spawn low. I probably could lower the ceiling a little bit too and have us, you know, just not let them spawn as high, but I think that would reduce the spawn rates at least somewhat. Anyways, with this setup, we now have a constant production of gas tiers. And since uh, I don't intend to make gas tiers this way forever, because they're another resource that has a mystical agriculture recipe, I'm only putting it in the, you know, like up in the corner here, so I don't have to dedicate a good slot to it. Not that I'm, like, what am I going to do, run out of chore slots or something? Whatever. With those gas tiers, it's time to do, you guessed it, more alchemy. Oh, why is this not going? Feather, glowstone, simple stimulant. Feather, glowstone, simple stimulant. Gas tier, erothium, slime ball. I probably just don't have LP. A common problem. And now we're in business. All right, so we're almost ready to craft runes of air, at which point we are done with tier one runes. Huzzah. The last of the tier one runes, the rune of air. Huzzah. All right, so let's, perhaps in celebration, watch some of these craft. Ah, uh, beautiful. All right. So with tier 1 runes done, naturally our next step are the tier 2 runes. So as I mentioned before, the tier 1 runes in here are not consumed, which means we just need to gather up these things. Uh, unfortunately, it looks like it needs to be exactly these saplings, which is a little annoying. Um, for now, I'll probably just go find them out in the world and uh, get them. Same with these berries. Does it have to be exactly these berries? Ah, all right. Starting with the Rune of Spring, for these flowers, my plan is to go to a flower forest that I discovered 300-ish meters away from our base, which is pretty close. And uh, I'm going to just kind of pop our... I made a Horn of the Wild, and combined with our magnet, I'm hoping that I can just hold down right-click, fly around, and get all kinds of flowers. Unfortunately, there's more than fits in my inventory, so uh, my inventory is a little cramped and I'm outside of range of my ME system. But I'm thinking I can just do like this, I guess. And hopefully there's not way too many types of flowers. Although once we add in this the Project Vibrant Journey flowers, maybe there's more than I signed up for. Or the plants flowers. Jeez. Alright, there's a lot of different flower types. This might not work as planned. Huh. Hold as many I can as as many as I can in my satchel. Let my magnet hang on to the rest of them and just slowly fly home. And as long as I get back within five minutes, these shouldn't despawn. And I just have to get within like, uh, where is home? There. I just have to get within like 200-ish meters because that's the range of my bag, or of my uh, wireless ME system. We follow me. Whoops. If you fly too far away, they just start dropping. So I have to, can't get too far. And we made it. So this is going to take up a bunch of random storage space in our chest, but whatever. Man, most of these flowers probably have literally no use whatsoever. Shame that they're... I guess some of them are edible. I honestly question what the value of this plant spot is. I guess they can be turned into dyes? Some of the things can be eaten? I don't know. 
I feel like this mod adds very little value, but who am I to judge? Well, unfortunately, from all of that, we didn't get any blue orchids. Um, I don't know if they just don't spawn in uh, in sunflower, sunflower plains, or I just didn't find any. In any event, we can just use the alchemy recipe for it. So if we toss poppies into a mana pool that has an alchemy catalyst under it, which we can craft, that should be able to transform the flowers into blue orchids. So... First of all, why are these not running? Should be running. Huh. Weird. Whatever. Uh, I guess I'll just press a button. Alright, anyways. Now, if I put this catalyst down here, we're pretty close to replacing our flowers with better ones, so I'm not too worried. We can take poppies, throw them in, lag a bit, and they get turned into blue orchids. Now, if we want to, we can even keep throwing them in, and they go through the whole loop. So into alliums, and then you get the point. I think all flowers, at least all vanilla flowers, show up somewhere in this loop. So technically, if you need any vanilla flower, you can uh, get it by throwing them into the mana pool enough times. Yeah, well, eventually you turn back into poppies, and it starts a loop over again. So I'm not 100% sure if it's all vanilla flowers or not, but it's definitely a lot of them at the very least. For the types of saplings, I only have a handful of eucalyptus and sakura saplings, so I'm just going to grow them a few cycles. Uh, looking at the uses for these runes, we don't consume a tremendously large number of them, so I'm okay with make like... Uh, yeah, so I'm okay with just making a handful of Runes of Spring and then not worrying about, you know, having an infinite supply of them on demand. As for the last item in the group, the Redwood Sapling doesn't have a crafting recipe, so I assume it has to come from the Redwood Tree. And I don't know if I've found a Redwood Biome yet, but uh, I don't think so. So I guess I have to fly around a bit and look for a Redwood Biome. So the easiest way to find a specific biome, in my opinion, oh look, right, found another one right here, is just to, uh, if you look right here where the cursor is, you see the name of the biome even if you haven't explored it. So I've just been going around the map, you know, in unexplored areas, just mousing over it. But uh, you saw that here. Well, I, I found one here, but uh, there's an even closer one here. So I can just mark a waypoint and then... Uh, which way is it? So yeah, 1,800 meters this way. And here we are, redwood leaves. So I don't really care for the wood. I'm just going to harvest some leaves. I think it's still lagging because of terrain generation, though. So I guess I'll let the terrain generation catch up. As for the berries, I was hoping that we could just bone meal the bushes. But it seems like bone mealing them only... It doesn't like cause them to grow berries. It just causes them to grow taller. But uh, in entertaining news, that means we can build a very tall berry tree, given enough bone meal. How is that practical? It probably isn't, but it's entertaining. I just grew a long line of plants, and they seem to pop out berries reasonably quickly. So I'll just come back after a couple minutes and harvest some berries. We don't even need a lot at three per rune. If we're only intending to make, say, like 10 runes, that's only 30 berries. Apparently, three blackberries can make a berry medley, but three blueberries cannot. I don't know. Uh, so given that, I'm just going to swap my bushes over to blackberry bushes, I guess. In any event, with our berry situation sorted, let's craft runes of spring. Now we can only craft up to eight at a time because that's how many of the tier one runes we have. If we ask for any more than that, um, it doesn't know that it gets the tier one runes back. So uh, it tries to, you know, craft more of them. I could tell it that the tier one runes, that it gets the tier one runes back, but I think that actually causes a cyclic recipe and makes it very unhappy. Let me try just to be sure. So we can encode this recipe two ways, right? The First way, the way I had it before, oopsies, is like this, where the recipe uh, puts the rune of water and fire in the input, but not in the output. 
The other way to encode it is to put it both the input and the output. Technically, this is a better representation of what the crafting actually does, but I think that makes Applied Energistics choke on calculating the crafting plan because uh, the calculating graph is now cyclic. So now if I ask for this, uh, yeah, it's like, it's a, well, hold on. If I ask for 10, ah, it doesn't choke. If I ask for runes of water, does it choke on that? Yeah, it causes it to choke on crafting runes of water. It's like, well, why, you know, I can craft runes of water with runes of water, so why do I do that? So um, it's sub, at least in my opinion, it's suboptimal to design your recipes like this. Instead, uh, instead make your recipes like this and just request less runes of spring and whatever at a time. So let's take our bad recipe out, put our good one in, and request eight runes of spring. All right, fire. And we should see it craft just as before. And then when it's done, uh, I, this is actually my first time crafting tier two runes in this pack, so I should actually make sure that we do get the tier one runes refunded. Because I think that is a Batania config. It's I've never played in a pack that didn't refund the tier one runes, so I would be surprised and scared if it didn't. But let's uh, let's find out. Okay, looks like it did. Yeah, perfect. So, no crap. The next set. All right, that's the first of the runes of uh, runes of spring. Next we have Summer, Autumn, and Winter. Rune of Summer looks like it's an easy one. None of the components we have to go out and get. It's uh, lots of nested crafting, but that's what the A system's good at. So, alright, kick that off. Uh, next up, Rune of Autumn. Now there's a few things here. I actually don't know how to get these metamorphic tiles, so I have to, or metamorphic stones. I have to look that up. I think it comes from, uh, we have to use a Batania flower for it if memory serves me right, but I'm not exactly sure. So it's a flower called the Marimorphosis that turns stone into the various forms of metamorphic stone. When we request one, we should see it get auto-crafted here. Oh, I probably... Wait a second. Oh, I yoinked all the items. Uh, one sec. Placing a Solganya here should prevent the item yoinking. That's the flower that disables your magnet. So, now we should actually craft one. Oh, good old automation. And, oh, uh, I think because we have, yeah. I thought I had to add it to the filter, but I guess ignore metadata took care of that. All right, so we just have to plant this flower um, and then shoot it with some mana. Let's... Uh, Where's my wand? Um, I need a spreader. Can I make one? You bind to you. Actually, wait, flowers don't have to be shot with mana, do they? They just automatically link to mana pools. Yeah, that one's already linked to the mana pool. And then what it does is it converts nearby stone into metamorphic stone. Now, it just so happens that there's probably... Okay, maybe there's not stone down here. I was about to say there's probably stone underground that's in range. But I think this area is actually just built on a bunch of dirt. So if we get some stone... Oh yeah. Uh, now the, ch the type of stone it gets turned into is largely based on the biome. So here in the forest biome, most of it gets turned into uh, forest stone. But there's like a chance. So we got some taiga stone here, some mountain stone here. For runes of autumn, we need taiga, fungal, and forest. So I'll just place a bunch of stone and uh, mine it at the end, I guess. To automate this process, I did have a block placer that's extremely laggy, apparently. But it places blocks. Mechanical Miner with a Silk Touch book to mine them. They don't have to be Silk Touch, but if you don't Silk Touch them, you get the Cobblestone variant that you have to cook again into the stone. And uh, yeah, I'm just going to provide it with, you know, nine stacks of stone 
could pipe more in, but I think once it's done with nine stacks, we should have enough to proceed. And with that, we can craft Runes of Autumn. Or not. What's the problem? Oh, I used some of the Runes of Fire to make the, uh, the flower thing. So I guess we can only craft seven at a time, down from eight. Um, anyways, there we go. That leaves just one left, the Rune of Winter. And this looks like the easiest of the lot. Whew. The only tricky ingredient in our Rune of Winter is the cake. Now, I have big plans for cake because I'm going to make all our men out of it. But uh, most of that will be after we have mystical agriculture to make like the eggs and the milk. So for now, my plan for cake is villagers. I grabbed one of the villagers out of our smeltery. And he was generous, generous enough to offer one emerald per cake. So you're going back in your Pokeball and you're going into our trader. Let's see, we want emeralds for cakes and we can take the coal out. So uh, every 382 ticks, he will trade one emerald for a cake. But um, there we go. So, Runes of Winter are the last of the Tier 2 runes. Huzzah. All that's left then are the Tier 3 runes. Now, there are some other runes that are from the, uh, the Batania add-on, but I won't deal with those yet. The Tier 3 runes are actually very easy. As I've mentioned earlier, it's two Tier 1s, two Tier 2s, and some Mana Diamonds. And I think every rune follows that pattern. So, uh... All I have to do is encode these. But since this recipe has already gone, or this recipe, this uh, episode has already gone on crazy long, I think uh, I'll wrap up this episode here. Um, there's really nothing to see with the tier three runes. We'll come back tomorrow and put all of our runes to use doing some wonderful things for us. So I hope you enjoyed this episode and I hope to see you in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.